previously on Printed Props Workshop, Paint Correction, Fixing Print Issues with Resin Painting, and Yet More Bad Weather. And now, the conclusion. As sure as it is my duty to remain loyal to your command, you have to learn to make your own decisions. I also have another duty, to protect those men. In my book, experience outranks everything. Experience outranks everything. Hey everyone, welcome back to Printed Props Workshop. Today for part four of the Rex armor stand build, the final part. And today we have no time lapses because obviously the all the pieces were printed out. So we're going to skip that part. We're going to jump into the final stages. Now I did find as I was going through my footage that my airbrushing footage was actually not that great is in it was completely unusable and rather than opting to try and shoehorn it in I've cut that phase out but I do discuss in the other phases how I actually did the airbrushing and it was something that I actually saw through a couple of other YouTube channels and we'll go over that more as we as we move into it but for now let's get jumping forward I'll touch base with you guys at the end when we'll do the final showcase and the final reveal of everything. So these are the completed pauldrons with the battle damage that was requested by the customer. I ended up using a sponge with white spray paint on to match the paint to the existing chest plate. And then I painted in some silver and then used my airbrush to spray a basically a brown dirty water mix onto the pauldrons to make it look like dirt and grime and in some cases just a little bit of rust as well and I think it came out looking really really good. As for the chest plate, well the, again the customer requested that it was damaged up so this is exactly what I did for him. It's scuffed, it's got paint chips, it's got dirt, it's got explosion damage it's got soot, it's got scratches, it's basically pretty much exactly what he was looking for by the sounds of it because I sent him some pictures already and he's had a look and told me that it looks perfect. So all in all I think it came out really really good. The back plate again is scratched up, damaged up and dirty and I did some damage with a Dremel as well to just kind of might give it a little bit of pitting in the back in places to just kind of make it look more worn and then down the bottom here as well as you can see I dragged a little bit with a blade to just give it a some texture so that it um, picked up some dirt and some scratches in there I basically painted silver paint in there and then sprayed over it with the airbrush to give it that kind of dirt and worn texture to it and then finally the armor clips, they're basically just very, very dirty with a few scratches on them because they sit on the top. So I figured they would probably collect dirt in the corners. So with regards to the sponge idea, this is literally what I did. It's a crocodile clip mount from my paint stand. And I picked up some synthetic sponge pieces from Walmart and I used my trick of spraying the spray paint onto wax paper to give myself a pool of it and then all I did was basically dabbed it in and then came to the pieces and just blotched it on in patterns and let the natural shape of the sponge form the damage on the armour. So it came out I think with more natural looking damage as opposed to me intentionally trying to scuff it up and then once i'd done that all i did was i came in with some silver or well, some gun metal in the very bottom and then i just used the dirty um airbrush dirty paint water mix to spray over it so you can see there's like water marks and that on the armor from where it's obviously got dirty or where there's been dirt smudged onto it and things like that it gives it a really, really, really nice finish overall. And I've just come outside now to basically hit the weathering 
with some clear coat so that the weathering seals in as well because obviously we don't want the weathering coming off during travel and if it's in bubble wrap while it's traveling over to the to the buyer then there's a possibility that it could come off the reason why i'm doing this in my garage obviously is fairly evident because we're in the middle of a storm here right now um still got snow on the ground but now it's raining we're kind of in the we're in that intermediate period here in Pennsylvania now where it's kind of still winter, but then at the same time it's trying to be spring. But then next month it'll be winter again. So, you know, we're just, that's the way it is out here. So out here, I can probably give you a much better idea of the um, armor clips themselves. Now again, using the airbrush dirty water idea, it really gets you kind of the rained on grime look which is what I was looking for and it really kind of makes it so that it collects on the edges and then all I did was I got a piece of paper towel and just rubbed at it and basically rubbed out the middle and rubbed off the sections at, at the top here and let the dirt collect elsewhere and then I just kind of brushed on a few places where the paint had scuffed off and there was just visible metal and again came out really really well in the end so these are the last two pieces that I need to clear coat so I'm gonna get these clear coated because this piece is 100% done and I'm looking forward to getting it out when I saw all of this in its final form so to speak on my office floor I was amazed at how well it all came together and I don't mean that in the sense of I didn't have faith in myself, but prior to doing this commission, I'd never really handled weathering. I'd played around with it on a couple of pieces of my own, but I'd never done it on a large scale. So running into this, I decided to weather my Mando, my Mando Merc's attire. So at this point, you saw the helmet in part three. And I went through and I learned how to weather that using the same method as I've covered in the video so far. And when I actually started attacking this commission with the paint and water mix, I was amazed at how much more detail it actually gave it so quickly. And it made me realize that weathering really is something that is very important to push that project to the next level to make it look so much more realistic so much more detailed and in the end i'm glad that i pushed myself through and learned more about it because i think it came out great in closing with this whole project it was a massive learning experience for me. I never tackled a commission this big, for one thing. I'd tackled other commissions before. I've, I'd had some over the years where I'd had to do lightsabers for uh, someone's wedding, which was a very big project at some about 18 lightsabers. But in terms of sizing, it was the biggest project that I'd ever done. And in terms of new skills, it was the biggest project that I'd ever done as well. And there was a lot to it that made me very nervous, obviously. I knew there was a lot that could go wrong, and Adam, the person that had ordered the commission from me, he's a customer that's come back to me over and over again, so I obviously didn't want to mess it up. And once I received the picture from him of everything together, it just looked so good. Now, obviously, you're going to be seeing that picture while I'm talking right now. And it was at this point that I realized that this project had actually come together with two other Etsy sellers as well. And I'm going to leave their details in the description of this video so that if anyone's actually interested, they can look at their stores as well. And... I was really, really happy with 
how it looked. I mean, it looked fantastic. You can, you've seen it now. Overall, with the soft goods and the helmet and the armor stand and everything, it just it was just absolutely perfect. And the placement that he had with the banner behind it as well was, again, absolutely perfect. So, in the end, I would love to have another shot at an armor stand just to see what I can do. You know, I've done my Mando armor. Do I want to do other armors? Absolutely I do. Do I have the space for them? Absolutely not. This room is almost permanently a disaster. But it's a workshop. It's an office. It's everything in between. So it just kind of is, you know? But for now, we're going to leave it at that. We have a very interesting project coming up next week which is something for comic con which i've been teasing here and there which is the death star portrait i keep looking this way because i have the finished portrait sitting right there and it looks it looks absolutely amazing so until next time i will just say thank you for following along with this multi-part series let me know in the comments what you think to this setup. Do you like the multi-part pieces more than individual one-shots? Or should I just mix it up here and there every now and then? But for now, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the series and may the force be with you.